This is our third video in the OSI model lesson. This is the halfway point. So for those of you who are subscribed to us on YouTube, thank you very much. This is also our last free video that's available. To see the rest of this series, as well as all of our videos on technology, as well as life sciences, please be sure to check out MrFordsClass.net. Remember, membership there is what allows us to do this. So let's get going with our data link layer. The data link layer, layer two, is going to create what we know as data packets. Basically, this is envelopes for our message. It's going to organize those bits of data, those zeros and ones, into what we call frames. It's also going to create and check something called the CRC. This deals with error checking. It wants to make sure that the data packet, the frame, is what it was supposed to be. It's actually in tact, it's true, it is what it's supposed to be. This layer creates boundaries, marks data's beginning as well as ends. It ensures the layers above it do not see errors. So this is going to be in charge of quality control. It's going to make sure that data that comes into that network is what it was supposed to be when it was sent out of a other network. So it's doing your data checking, it's doing your error checking. It also handles something called a MAC address. It's divided by the IEEE 802 into two sublayers. So not only do you need to know layer two and all the other layers, but you also have to be aware of sublayers when present. In this case, the 802, IEEE 802, divides the layer two data link into a media access control layer, the MAC area, as well as something called the logical link control, or LLC. The MAC area, the media access control, this sublayer includes physical addressing, logical topologies, method of transmitting on the media. Now you might have remembered from a previous video, we talked about logical topologies. We talked about um, how information is sent around a network and we had different types of networks that we could use. If you don't remember that, go check out the previous videos. The physical address is burnt into what we know as a network interface card, a NIC which is also a layer two device. In your NIC, you have this physical address that's burned into this card. It's assigned by the manufacturer. This MAC address is the social security card, the social security number of that device. It's the logical physical address of the network, of that specific computer or networking device that you're using. The MAC address is a unique 48-bit address. Every manufacturer of NICs get a range of numbers from the IEEE. The unique range is known as what we call a OUI, or an Organizational Unique Identifier. This is how we can track back what data was sent or who sent the data, because the MAC address is sealed on the device. Now, it is possible to spoof a MAC address. It's a little bit harder to do that than, let's say, an IP address, which we'll talk about in the next video. The MAC address, it is written in groups of two hexadecimal digits separated by hyphens or colons. You need to be aware of this. Again, these kind of questions show up on your Network Plus exam. The first six digits are the manufacturer's ID, and the last six digits are unique to that card. So your first portion of the MAC address is by the device manufacturer. So whoever you buy your NIC through, that's their special code. And then the manufacturer assigns the last portion of the MAC address to you, a unique identifier to that specific card that's in your device. The logical link control, the LLC, talks to the operating system, whether you have Windows, Mac, Linux, what have you. It places data coming from the software into the frames and creates that CRC. It deals with incoming frames. So let's tie this all together. How does this all relate together. The operating system gives the NIC, the network interface card, data to send. It says, here's your information, send it forward, get it out there, go forth, okay? The NIC is going to build a frame to transport the data. It's going to package it up nice and neat. The NIC adds data to the frame followed by the CRC. The NIC puts the destination address and the sending address on the frame, so it's creating an envelope. It's going to check to see if anyone is using the network to avoid collisions, to avoid damaging the packet. 
if the network is open and otherwise if it like picks up a phone and it hears the dial tone and not a busy signal or somebody talking if it hears a dial tone it hears that the network is empty and open it's going to send a frame all nodes on the network will take a look at the envelope it's kind of like sending an inter-office mail if you ever work in an office and you have inter-office mail this is what's happening here the envelope with somebody's name on it goes around the office and people look at it and go oh, I'm not John Smith oh, I'm not John Smith oh hey I'm John Smith this information is for me only the node that the frame is attended for will interact with it the receiving node checks the CRC to ensure data integrity it's going to make sure that this um, information that this error control checking is matching what should be in the envelope so for example if you've ever bought anything from Amazon or any other online retailer it should come with a packing slip right you see the packing slip it tells you what should be in the box that you just got that's what the CRC does alumni of the layer 2 includes as we've already said several times the network interface card the NIC switches switches are different than hubs hubs were layer 1 switches are layer 2 they're a little bit smarter than a hub. A hub just repeats information to everybody. A switch is going to look for a MAC address. This is, by the way, switches are now being uh, used to replace hubs. Hubs really are have fallen out of fashion in the, the years since they've been invented. Switches are now better because they're smarter. They just don't repeat information to everybody. They know who that letter is intended for based on the MAC address and will send that data packet to the correct person who's supposed to receive it. So it works faster than a hub and it also lessens network traffic because it creates segments of the network. So instead of repeating it to everybody, it's directed towards who's supposed to get it and clears up the rest of the network. Okay, in our next video, we're gonna take a look at layer three, the network layer.